Hello, this is George from 13722A. Uh, I'm a driver and builder of, on Greenhouse. And this is like a little robot explanation uh, post SIG. Uh, so jumping right into it, uh, we have this drivetrain. It's pretty standard. It's 480 RPM on 3.25 inch. I, like, I'm not quite sure, but I, I think this is what uh, Pink Shine Unicorns ran. Uh, so because their robot was like much faster than anyone else's and upon closer inspection I'm pretty sure this is the gap between the wheels uh, but yeah a robot hat a robot's top speed is much higher than most robots uh, but the main problem with our robot is its weight uh, since we have a bunch of tech on our robot uh, that we either got inspiration from or we improvised like innovated ourselves our robot is pretty heavy it sits at around 16 to 17 pounds um and that makes our acceleration absolutely terrible compared to other robots uh that was like a really big problem uh in r16 of Smokey, uh when we were against uh both uh psu teams z and v uh near the last 20 seconds of the game we just didn't have enough acceleration to play well um but other than that, it's a pretty solid drivetrain. The only problem, the only main issue is just it's just 33 wide. It just can't fit in the parking zone very well. Uh, that affects both skills and match play. It affects like you can't really double park with this robot very well. I mean, I guess you can if you have like a really short like leeway distance between the edge of the robot and the parking zone. And for skills, you can't really clear the parking zone because the blocks just get wedged underneath here. And that's something that we'll improve on. But moving on from that, uh, we have this floating stage intake, which is pretty nice because it just like allows the blocks to like smoothly go in with like almost zero compression. Um, and you'd wonder why we chose these standoffs over our earlier design of just like a plastic piece with the slit cut into it that allows the high string shaft to move up and down. While that is smoother, yes, um, it doesn't allow us to add a double park, which we can show here two long pistons there that push down the intake. Uh, shout out to 229Y, I think. Y, uh, Nova. Um, they had a similar double park concept where they use standoffs as a floating stage and they just push the entire intake down. Um, what this allows us to do is potentially double park, although we never really used it at the SIG because it was kind of inconsistent. But essentially, what this does, how it works, is there's a distance sensor right there. Uh, I think you can see it yeah, right there. Um, it senses a block, and then whenever it does, it just pushes the the intake down, and that lifts our entire robot up. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, I think most double park teams have run that, except for maybe four thousand A earlier bot. Um, so yeah, moving on from that, our main stage intake, like all this stuff right here. Um, is all 600 rpm it's general is like generally pretty good uh we've never had many issues with it uh, up until now of course because i haven't touched the robot but if we put the robot up to the goal like this it's probably gonna jam right now but it i don't think it jammed very much at the comp besides like running autons and stuff because you can't really change that uh but I think it, it's it's pretty good. Uh, I did switch this gear out for uh, a more torquey ratio at the SIG because uh, apparently pushing blocks is more important than getting to the center without type of robot. Because, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the hopper is 400 RPM. This back agitator is 600 RPM. Uh, it's all connected by a 5.5 watt. Uh, the hood is also powered by 5.5 watt. This right here, it's geared up 600 RPM, and this is geared down to like 400 or 300 RPM. Uh, it's pretty solid ratio. And then uh, we have this fold up uh, aligner that you can pull down using the mass loader. Uh, it works pretty well. Well, it did work pretty well until it got bent because um, we don't have them bracing. Uh, but yeah, mass loader as well, pretty standard. Uh, we 
cut these here, these little like notches, because at the comp, I'm not gonna call anyone out here, but at the comp, teams try to sabotage other teams by putting the block like this, where this hexagon is facing out, which means that they're, the match loaders just hit it and then get stuck, right? But this notch allows us to push even further. It does not force. And that allows us to like get the match load like more quickly. I did this at the comp, by the way. So like just using one hand control, but if we start the intake and do that, right? It gets it pretty well. And then we can like back out again. So that this notch right here is like something that we just thought of and at the in the middle of smoke uh, in the middle of smoky because well this is after all of the, all of our skills runs were done um for two of our auton attempts the blocks were like this so some some team decided to do this and then our autons failed um but other than that yeah it's pretty it's a pretty good match loader the only this the only problem i see that the distance from the match loader to the main intake is too small so the blocks that go in don't like funnel in that smoothly um yeah we moved on from that uh i'm gonna talk about the main tech on a robot so one of the biggest issues is keeping the robot in size like horizontally while still having a decent d score so as you can see as you can probably tell this is like way out of size because this this wing is like at 20 21 inches right uh so D-scoring is pretty hard when you don't have the wing perfectly perpendicular to the ground because what this does, what making making this perp perpendicular to the ground makes it that you can just drive up to the goal and don't and you don't have to worry about aligning. You can just like drive up to it right there and you just back up. And then the entire thing goes out. Uh, but in order to keep it in size, right, we have to start it at like 17 inches um but so how do we keep it at this perpendicular state whenever the match starts so you probably saw me filling with this thing right here it's supposed to be banded but the band broke uh so i'll just like hand do it uh so when this match when the uh d sword is pistoned up this little like notch this little lever right here is supposed to fold back like that and that essentially locks this uh, D-score from going down further to its original state. So it just locks it into this position and that makes it really easy to D-score because uh, in this position, it, like I said, it's perpendicular to the ground. And this, so that means this hook can just, you can just drive up to it and just like D-score the entire goal without any, like, without any aligning problems. Um, the other pieces of tech, like I said, was this double park. I can, I think I can like demo it. So if you like drive up to the thing, our parking tolerance is like relatively small. So you can just like go this far in. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the other side. Yeah, there you go. And then I think this is the right button. Oh, my bad. You have to hold it. So yeah. It's double parking, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So yeah, this allows, this was going to be most optimal for like match play. Although we never really ran it because there was not enough time to. And the, the fact that D score is so like not game changing, just mitigates the entire purpose of double park. Um, although we did hit double park with another team uh, that swung the wind the wind towards us which is pretty cool uh, and then the actual main part of the robot that i want to explain today is this trap door right here it's powered by two long stroke pistons and it can like go up and down like this well friction we all hate friction uh, so yeah what uh there's a really big problem with most hopper bots is that color sorting uh, you can't really like you can't really intake blocks out of a mash loader without running the risk of it getting like jumbled up in the hopper because you have an agitator in the back right so 
if you intake like three reds and three blues, you're gonna you're not gonna outtake three reds and three blues. You're gonna outtake like a red, a blue, a blue, a red. You're not gonna get color bonus. That's really bad because in skills, color bonus is worth a lot. So, uh, the one way to do it is to just spit the spit the, spit the blocks you don't want out. So like. and the block will go out this direction. But the thing is, if you spit it out, the RNG of the blocks, you don't know where they're gonna go. So it's really, it's much harder to get color bonus, right? But with this design right here, uh, combined with uh, a new start robotics hood, uh, like redirect, it's possible to control where the blocks go. So like we, suppose we want to color sort the reds to do color, but just play it on color sort reds, right? Instead of spitting out onto the ground, we can just trap it in the trap door up here and store the blues on there. What this allows us to do is filter the colors into two different layers. So, yeah, so what this allows us to do is first outtake uh, a solid color and then drop the trap door that allows the, the second uh, color of blocks to drop down and outtake it like that. This, like, during skills has worked pretty well for, for color bonus. The only problem is, um, you can't really do this for any other hopper design. Uh, you, you must have a redirect and you must have the ability to intake like BarkBots did, uh, like very early season. Um, and you must have a front to back, uh, sorry, a front to front hopper or else this like, will not feasibly be like be very possible uh we already tried doing uh front to back on cad uh but the space you have to like the space you have to uh sacrifice in order to do like a redirect design is much more than the blocks actually take up so you're and you're ending up with less blocks than you're actually going to score which is really which is like really bad so our next spot is going to be more of a half hopper uh so yeah I was, i'm looking forward to that uh but yeah that's basically all the tech that we have on a row 